pent up insecurity maybe for some of the sellers that thought, oh, maybe the market's peaked, you know, prior to this and maybe the recession is going to come and maybe we're going to sell some stuff or take some money off the table, which I think at the end of the day in the car world, there isn't much of a recession going on, at least yet. Well, I think modern supercars and Ferraris have been on fire for the last year, and they continue to be. And I think we saw that with the F40s. We saw that with the F50s. Um, you know, there was no weakness there. And we've already had, you know, in the last two years, you've, you could almost say you've had a 100% increase in value on those cars. And... Uh, and it continued. I thought that we might get a pullback. You've got, you know, this talk about recession coming. You've got, uh, you know, enough cars there that, you know, again, to absorb two F50s and two F40s and, you know, to absorb those cars at new numbers doesn't always happen, but they did just fine. The two good ones, there was one that uh, sold for less money, but it wasn't a great car but the two good cars were uh, 38 39 all in you and I have had conversations over the past couple of years as we've been apart for three years mm -hmm. um, one of the things you've been sharing with me is a bit of a shift in the market uh, specifically from 60s era Ferraris to 80s and newer mm -hmm. what's going on there I, I, I mean right now um, we're seeing that shift but I don't know if it's a temporary shift or a systemic shift in people's mindsets. Um, and I don't think it is. I think that with new pricing today on the modern supercars uh, and, you know, the 60s Ferraris and the 50s Ferraris were very stable. I mean, they're, they're I would say, back to, you know, you had a 275 GTS sell for good money. You had a 4-cam sell for good money. Well, they sold it for, I think, just under 3.5 all in. which w And it was a good car, but it wasn't, you know, a, a freshly Ferrari restored car. And the 275 was a good car again, but it was a 3.5 for that one or 3.4, whatever it was. And I think it was 2.2 on the 275 GTS. Which is nineteen or uh, is uh, nineteen is uh, old, yeah yeah is twenty fifteen market which was previously the peak you know the twenty fifteen money so I think what you've had is the supercar stuff has pulled up mm -hmm. that stuff has pulled back to you know close to the peak market and now the question is you know does the new supercar stuff come down does this stuff go up but the disparity is bigger than it's ever been between those two or maybe that is the new market and that's the million dollar question you know the guy that guesses that right mm -hmm. is is going to look like a genius a year from now like in other markets you've lived through this and you've seen generational shifts mm -hmm. what made up a generational shift and what made up a blip well i'm not sure it, generational shifts happen with b caliber cars a caliber cars transcend generational shifts so you know you, you just saw the slr so 142 million dollars for a 50 sports racing car yes. people that say 50 sports racing cars are not in vogue today it's modern supercars well you just had the world's most expensive car by almost double great cars that are unobtainium doesn't matter what era if you had an unobtainium you know, 8C Alpha, that is the, the, you know, the killer car, it would set a world record price today. But they made four of those. Uh, again, special, special cars yeah. that, um, you know, are, are special for either the amount produced, mm -hmm. the story behind it, or, you know, the quality of the car, or a combination of, you know, all of those things, I think transcend market shifts would you consider an f40 an, a 288 gto f50 would you consider those on obtainium or those more secondary they're in the same league as um 
as a four cam. Okay, they're they're rare cars, they're great looking cars, they're super desirable cars, but they're not, you know, uh, uh, F50 F50 GT1. They're not, you know, the really special cars from that era. So that means they could be impacted by a generational shift. Sure. But we've always had that. I mean, you know, we had it with um, we had it with Ferraris against muscle cars. You know, back in '08, where a Hemi Cuda was seven hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand for a hardtop, and a four cam was less money. It didn't make sense. And right now, I'm not sure that some of the you know the shift makes much sense either during inflationary times typically tangible assets do extremely well and we're seeing that right now even the cars that were a little bit weaker the last couple of years seem to be back to 2015 pricing and seem to be holding their own you could take european cars you could take hemi kudas are kind of back to those numbers um you know of of uh say 08 which was their peak uh, almost any sort of car is back to I want to call it uh, an all-time high whether that all-time high previously was in 08 or in 2015 depending at you know depending what market it was when I started in business interest rates were stupid I mean they were you know 12 13 percent and just previous to that they were 20 percent so they were trying to control inflation and what was interesting is between 85 and 90 the collector car market did go ballistic while they were trying to control it you know and in 91 91 it fell off a cliff and i think that there's so much money in the world today and there's so many more wealthy people in the world today and money has been dirt cheap up until now and the question will be, will money go back to being dirt cheap or are 5% mortgages or 6% mortgages after the next rate hike? I assume there's going to be a rate, rate hike. You know, is that going to be the norm for one year, five years, or 10 years is the big question. How much of the classic car market, the collector car market, is impacted by interest rates? Because when you think about it from the perspective of the layman, he looks at it as, oh, it's a rich guy. He's writing a check for even if it's a $5 million car. But that's not exactly the case, is it? You know, it'd be interesting to um, get all the data from, you know, insurance companies and, and companies that have all the data and see what the average collector car price is. Because I believe it's far lower than most people think. I mean, you're talking of extreme numbers when we talk about f40s and 288s and i bet you the average price of a collector car was 60 grand i've chatted with dave kinney about this who works yep. for Haggerty, and the number is somewhere in the 50s yeah from what i understand but how much of that is impacted by interest rates like back in 08 a lot of it was fueled by people taking money out of their house and then buying that dream car they've always wanted. Well, I think it's a different animal today is, is we've had such inflationary times. I mean, when, when the Fed and our bank up here, you know, central bank, print, I don't know what the real number is, but 25, 30, 40 percent of the money supply and print it and push it out there. You can't put five trillion dollars or whatever the real number is into the economy over a course of two years and not expect there to be huge inflation. You can't put another 700 billion dollars into the economy and say that's going to fight inflation. And I don't care whether you do it through reducing school debt or doing this or doing that. People have more money in their pocket, and they're going to spend it. So we've got, at least in the U.S., we've got you've got the Inflation Reduction Act, and then they're trying to add another three hundred billion on top of it with reducing school debt. The way I see that, and I know we're getting kind of economics, not cars, but I'll bring it back. You've got seven hundred billion that hasn't impacted inflation yet. 
because the money hasn't been spent. Right. You're talking next year, year after year after. Then if this thing actually magically happens with the school debt, it's not just a, a one year or even a two year. If these things actually come to pass, it's four or five years. Right. Come back to co- the classic car market. What does that do to us? Historically, again, there's going to be a flight to tangible assets during inflation for wealthy people. Because they're going to look at it and say, I put my money in the bank and okay, I'm going to get a little better interest rate than I did before. But I'm not even going to keep up with inflation there. Is there a class that you think would outperform? Meaning Europeans, muscle cars, is there something that you see that's breaking out at this point? No, I, like I see strength across the board. Like there wasn't, there wasn't a, um, you know, a mark or... Uh, um, you know, a, a era of car that I would say was weak. Rising tide raises all ships. That concerns me more than it does make me feel confident about the market I'm trying to invest in. Perhaps I'm off base on this, but it doesn't look like these are decisions being driven by this is the car I want. It's exactly what you're saying where I am going to hedge my bets and I'm going to get it to a hard asset in this case one I can drive and enjoy. Is that a fair assessment? Pricing sometimes is purely a function of who is in the room that minute. Pent up insecurity maybe for some of the sellers that thought, oh, maybe the market's peaked you know, prior to this and maybe the recession is going to come and maybe we're going to sell some stuff or take some money off the table, which I think at the end of the day, In the car world, there isn't much of a recession going on, at least yet. I'd like to solicit their feedback about the whole thing of the general economy, the impact of the general economy on the classic car hobby. Mm -hmm. Because I think maybe you and I disagree a little bit about this. I'm I'm a bit more concerned that every aspect of the collector car hobby is going up, where previous years, like Ferraris went up and muscle cars went down and vice versa. It wasn't a rising tide raises all ships. So I want to turn that around to these guys and get their insight. What do they think? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all in word, Moto Man TV, all in word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, I do want to leave a little bit of a tidbit behind the scenes here. Uh, so I barely caught this man before he is going out of town because he is jetting off to Europe tomorrow mm-hmm. to go drive your GT. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel terrible for you. <laughs> When I grow up, I want to be Peter Clute. So we see you in the next episode. Bis später.